Good morning, everyone. Here we are on <coughs> May 24th, and uh, we're continuing uh, to see the end of David here. It's, uh, we're finishing up with some of his last uh, psalms that, that he's written. And, uh, we're about to see uh, where one of his other sons tried to take over the kingdom uh, when the attention was Solomon uh, was to be king. But we're not there yet. We're, we're still at this place where David is actually... Um, He's, uh, he's praying vengeance. He, uh, he wants the Lord to, to, to come and, and take um, vengeance on all of his enemies. In, in many ways, David is a, a prototype. Um, he's an anomaly in, in the Old Testament because David somehow was able to see into what was coming, into, into the New Covenant, and he was able to... Uh, bring that into his reality in many ways. Uh, but in, in these ways, there was um, he, he was very much under the Old Testament, um, this place of, of vengeance, uh, this place of wanting to see his, his enemies um, suffer, really. And, uh, and, and under the, the, the New Covenant, we know that that is just not acceptable. It's not an acceptable attitude at all. Um, Jesus told us to, to love our enemies. And he said, what, what good is it if you, if you love those who love you? Love those who hate you. Pray for those who persecute you. Much, I, I've, I've met a lot of people who uh, still live under the Old Testament idea of, of vengeance. Um, who are, who are ready to to do to destroy a person uh, to defend themselves ready to destroy a person to defend their their property of all of all things and um, we we've getting, we need to get a grasp on this it's like the disciples when they when they asked the lord if he wanted if he wanted them to call down the fires of of heaven on the cities that had rejected him and uh, he rebuked them and said, that, this, I haven't come to take life. I've, I've, I've come to give it. I've come to give it, guys. And we're, we're not here for ourselves. We're, we're not. We're, we're a city on a hill. We're a demonstration. Uh, God is demonstrating who he is through us. He's, he's demonstrating his, his love, his power, uh, his compassion, his mercy, his grace. He's, he's demonstrating to the world who he is through us. And and uh, we don't want to fail in that. We don't want to fail. to. Be, he's put us on display, and we, we don't want to fail in that. And so we got to get a, a grip on this, this whole idea that um, he, he blesses us here. Not uh, He takes delight in it, but, but th those blessings are supposed to flow through us and into the lives of, of the people around us, uh, into other people, uh, especially into brothers and sisters, uh, but also into the world. It's, it's an overflow principle. Um, we're supposed to take care of this relationship we, we have with him. We are, we are supposed to nurture this. We're supposed to, uh, we're supposed to learn how to rest in him. And, and then there's an overflow, and it's in that overflow that we're able to minister to people. And it is with blessing and not with cursing. We minister not just to those who, 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 who love us, but we, we minister to those who hate us. Uh, those who want to destroy us. Um, but the Lord is our protector. He's our defender. He's, he's the one who has our back. It's, uh, we have to move into that place of trust and, and, and of rest in order for us to be used by him. So it's very much a, a different place, uh, this, this new covenant, as compared to the old covenant. Um, there's a lot of new things. So, I mean, one of the greatest is the fact that Christ abides in us and we abide in him. And um, it, it's because of this abiding that we're able to love our enemies. It's because of his love that we're able to love our enemies, not seek vengeance on them. Because the, the whole reason is because he wants them saved. He wants them saved. He wants our enemies saved. He, he wants those who want to destroy us uh, to become his children and, and to come into eternity, to come into the, the kingdom of God. And, and we don't want to be a stumbling block for them at all. We want them to be able to see Christ in us. And maybe they'll, they'll curse us because of it. 
or maybe they will come to him because of it. It's not for us to guess. We we just have to be we just have to be faithful to the commandments that he's given to us. And the commandment is simple. We don't even have to think about it. We don't have to hear his voice for it. The commandment is simple. Love your enemies. So you be blessed in this day. It was a wonderfully encouraging prayer meeting last night. And the Lord sang over us. We get to experience his, his peace and his joy and his presence. Uh, there was healing last night. There was all kinds of stuff that was taking place. Um, the, the mountains were being torn down and the vill valleys were being filled in and, and the, the path was being made straight for us. And it's just incredible times we live in in our church. Incredible times. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful revival, but we, we really can't announce it yet because he wants us to learn how to hold on to it. He wants us to hold on to it. Once we've learned how to hold on to it, um, then it will expand. But uh, let's press in. Let's get deeper. Let's get closer to his heart still. So you'll be blessed in this day. Be used by him and rejoice in him. Worship. Worship people. Worship with all your might.